Thank you for doing that, Lori. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, I just, I sensed a fear, a spirit of fear in here this morning, and I, I speak to it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The fear must leave. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you that you are able to come and defeat fear. Yes. Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we just thank you that you're going to be here and you're going to lift us up, Father, Hallelujah. to believe higher, Father. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. So, today is Father's Day. So, as I did on... Um, whew. Ken, could you pray, please? Yes. Yeah. Everybody bow your head. Father, you're with us right now. Yes. Whether we're aware of it or not, you're always with us. You promised you'd never leave or forsake us. We know that. It's absolutely true. The world comes with bad reports, but you're always with a good report. Nothing's ever defeated you. As long as we abide in you, we'll never be defeated. Amen. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. We praise and thank you for that. It's a cherished position. We love it. Now, as David brings forth the word this morning, Lord, set folks free. Set them free. Encourage their hearts and strengthen them. Quicken their mortal bodies and let healing flow. Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Father, we say happy Father's Day. Yes, Lord. There's no father like you. Oh, how we love you. Happy Daddy's Day. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. 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 Thank you. Just so you know, I keep a watch on me. So when I get up here, I try to time myself to usually 20 minutes, okay? Now, if you look at your watch, that would mean that I'm not going to be done until about 10 after 12. If you have to leave, and if you have to leave, you have to leave. I'm not going to get mad at you. Nobody in this church is going to get mad at you. If you have to leave, get up and leave, okay? It's okay. I'm not going to get upset, all right? This is not what it's about. It's about you being close to, to Jesus Christ. It's not being close to me. I would love for you to be, be your friend and, and, and help you when you need me. Okay? But your relationship is with him. Okay? Not with me. It's, it's that relationship is the one that's important. Okay? So if you have to get up and leave, get up and leave. You're not going to offend anybody in here. You want me to tell Derek not to tackle the one that I told him? Yes. <laughs> yes. But I want to I want to I want to speak to you uh, on Mother's Day. Um, I, I was I was talking about, and I know that some people don't realize this, but there there's a character to God, yeah. and you know that God has a character of not only a mother, but a father, <laughs> of a brother. I mean, it, it, it it's endless with Him, right? So. You, you think uh, we, we like to put God on the earth and put him that how we operate, okay? I, I couldn't begin to even imagine um, how a mother feels and how a mother goes through certain things, right? Because I'm not a mother. He didn't give me that. But he did give me a fatherhood, right? He gave me that, and he wanted me to, to get better at it. I am here to stand before you this morning. I didn't do it well. Jordan. That's on me. I wish I was a better father. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. But all I know is the only way I can become better is through him. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> because he's the best teacher we got. Amen. 
So we are going to fail. Okay? We are going to fail. But we need to look to him because he is a father that loves us so much and cares so for, for us so much that he don't want to see us fail. I'm going to be jumping around this morning. I'll try to, I'll try to give you verses if you want to write them down. And if I miss them, I'm sorry. <clears throat> but I got them here, so if you need them. <clears throat> Matthew 6, 8 through 13, it says, Therefore, do not be like them. He's talking about the world. For your father knows things that you have need of before you even ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven. Okay? So, I want you to understand. We've heard this prayer time and time again, but I want you to understand the meaning behind this prayer. Okay? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. This is all exalting him. Amen. Okay? This is all about exalting him. All right? Your kingdom come. Yes. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The reason he told us to pray that way is because there is no fear. There is no death. There is no sickness. There is no disease in heaven. There is none of that. There is no conflict with one another. There is none of that. Okay? There is no me getting out and going on the highway and, and starting to lose my mind because I'm stuck in traffic. Okay? There is none of that. He's telling us to bring it here. He's asking you to take part in your life and say, Lord, I want whatever's up here in my life, right here, right now. Amen. That's what he's telling us to do. Yes. Your kingdom come, your will, your will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. That means don't worry about tomorrow. You've heard that, right? Don't worry about tomorrow. There's enough tomorrow's worries to worry about, right? They'll be there tomorrow. Okay? We're going to look at today. So that's why it's it. Live the day. Okay? You don't have any idea what tomorrow will bring. Do you? No. no, no. And I can tell you, it's like I said before, as soon as you walk out that door, Satan is going to try to steal everything that you heard here this morning. Okay? And he's going to wake you up tomorrow morning with a different hurt or a different ache or a different pain or a different whatever else that he can try to make you believe. I'm going to share with you this morning, maybe you haven't, but I'm going to give you a relation, a, a revelation from God. J Jesus is truth. He says it in his word time and time again. Satan is lies. Yes. yes. So, when you believe what Satan is, it's because you choose to. Not because it is. The doctors aren't ruled by Satan when they give you a diagnosis that you don't like. That's, they're going by what they have been taught and what they have seen, right? right. But they haven't seen you believe in Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. Right? right? They don't know about that. They don't know that's when, yes, I go to the doctor because, of the, because I'm supposed to go to the doctor, okay? Yeah. If Jesus tells me not to, then I won't go, right? Right, amen. You know, so I, can, I, I go to the doctor, and he gives me a bad report. What do I have a choice to do, right? I can concentrate on what Jesus told me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Nothing by any means will hurt you. Right? Now wait a minute. Is that not what he said? 
Is that not what he said? Amen. So I have a choice, right? I can believe. Please don't get me wrong. Okay? I can believe the doc, doctor that gave me the lie. I'm telling you, please don't say I called the doctors liars. Right, right. Okay? I can believe the lie or I can believe the truth. Mm -hmm. That is my choice. Okay? That's my choice. <clears throat> and forgive us our debts as we forgive give our debtors. Well, there's a part in us, right? Yeah. Okay, so if, I, if somebody does me wrong, what am I supposed to do? I don't want to. You won't be forgiven. Okay, then he said you just made a choice. Right? right? right. Is that not what he said? You just made a choice. Did you make the right one? Not according to this. Right? It doesn't matter what I want. It matters what God wants. It matters what God wants me to believe. He wants me to get better. Do you really think that I want to go through all the aches and pains of life? Does anybody want to do that? Come on. All right? But he's trying to teach you, and he wants you to get better. And each time we go through one of these, he, he wants us to get better and better and better and better. So that way when the snake latches on, because the first time the snake latched on, I was fearful, right? Started running around with the chicken with the head cut off. Ah! You know, right? But now I'm getting closer and closer to believing that I just have to go like this. Get off. I know who you are. You're a liar. Amen. Name of Jesus. Amen. Right? And pretty soon, I won't even notice it. Right? Because I'll just be laying hands on people. Not even worrying about what, what goes on. Right? Amen. Amen. That's what is a difference. He is a difference maker. Amen. Amen. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Oof. He's amazing. So God's character, okay, that's what we're talking about. I can pick out a, a, a father character in the Bible, you know, and, and, <laughs> and we can find many good examples of that, right? But I'm looking for the character of God, the father that we all need. Yes. Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and God. That's 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. <clears throat> uh, James, it has, 117, it has every good gift. Yep. Every, every, are you listening? Yep. Every good gift. Amen. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father. Okay, I'm going. I'm, I'm. I'm. going to share with you another revelation. So, what are the bad gifts, and where do they come from? Think about it. It's not hard. He didn't make this complicated. He didn't make you go get a uh, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a doctorate. He doesn't. He he doesn't even care about that. Okay. He does not even care about that. Because I can tell you that if you're if you're <clears throat> been given the spirit to be a doctor by God, he will make a way for you to become a doctor. Okay? Without having any kind of schooling, without kind of, he will make a way. Okay? Because that's who he is. Okay? This is the world system we try to get in the, in the way of how God operates, right? We try to make the world system. It, it, it doesn't work. We're supposed to be in the spirit 
believing that he's able to do what he's able to do Amen. or what he's going to do. Every good gift, he says. So we know where the bad ones come from. <clears throat> John 10, 29, it says, My Father who has given to me is greater than all. And no one, please hear this, no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Right. When you become a new creature in Christ, when you get become saved, okay, when you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins, all right, that promise is yours. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. No one is able. No one. He's talking about anyone. Everyone, no one is able to snatch you out of my hand, my father's hand. He is saying that it doesn't matter whether it's Satan. It doesn't matter whether it's somebody that, you know, we went through, um, we went through some times here recently um, that things are kind of getting a little closer to home. We hear a lot about them on news. Um, we went through a mass shooting there in Smithsburg. Um, that kind of affected my um, my job a little bit. Um, if you don't know, I'm a building inspector for the county. And when you see the things that are happening out in the world, okay, um, the I think the, the the guy ended up shooting those people in a they call it a mass shooting. You know, he was from Texas, and my Brother-in-law Ronnie worked with him at where he works, and, and he laughed and went over there. Um, and Ronnie was saying, you know, well, that could have been me. Amen. Yeah. We have to realize that God is working even when we don't see it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Okay. I believe when he said that, I believe that's because God was looking out for him. Amen. Sure. Amen. Now you can believe whatever you want. But I know what he's done in our lives, yes. in my family's life, even when I didn't believe like I was supposed to believe, even when I didn't really believe that he could do some of these things that he said he could do in there. I come in here because I was hurt and I was afraid of what my son's diagnosis was when he was still in my, in my wife's womb. But I come in here knowing enough to ask you to pray with me and stand on God's word. Amen. And Jesus moved on your behalf and my behalf and healed my son before he was even born. Lord. Now you can believe what you want. You can call coincidence. But I choose to believe that my God is able. Amen. My Father it cares for me so much that He's able to heal and restore anything that you got going on in your life right now. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Preacher David. Yeah. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, Amen. says the Lord Almighty. Yeah. I want you to see how, what kind of character God has. This is how we need to operate. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. We're talking about the parable of the lost son that ran out and spent all that he had and wallowed around with the pigs. 
But his father waited. He waited for the day. He stood and watched every day. And I know he was praying, Lord, give me my son. Return him to me. So when he finally saw him, he took off running. Yes. Amen. God's running to you. Yes. He will never leave you nor forsake you. No. If you're hurting, if you're hurting, just ask him. Lord, I had enough. I can't take it anymore. Come and touch me. I need this healing from you. Yes. Or I need this deliverance from you, Lord. He's running to you. Amen. Don't run away from him. Hallelujah. Character again. In Proverbs, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Ooh, we don't like that. Just as a father, the son, and him who delights. So we are supposed to correct our children, even though the world tells us not to. Okay? I'm going to believe this guy. Amen. I'm not going to believe the guys that are out there telling me that probably never even had kids to begin with and are trying to tell me how to be a father. Okay? I know my father was a good father. Yeah. Okay? And he had to correct his children. He still does. And he still <laughs> takes a paddle and whips me on it behind when I need it. Amen. Okay? Amen. It's a thunderclap. All right? And I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't like that one. You know, my dad was a vice principal. He had one of them paddles. It's about this long, and the handle was about this long, right? So he'd get both hands on it. About that wide. Okay? And the day they took that out of school, <laughs> everything changed. Amen. Tragedy. Mm. So, if the world thinks that this is a better society the way it is, no. I want to pay attention to this. Amen. Okay? Because he has already lived it, has already defeated it, and the liar that comes to you every day has no chance. There is already a book written that has his ending, right? A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. Amen. The last one I want to share with you this morning. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no one, no one, no one comes to the Father except through him. Okay? The Father gave Jesus a, a certain place in the Trinity. Okay? If you all could stand there and tell me you understand the Trinity, I'll probably tell you you're lying. Because I don't understand it. Okay? It's hard to understand. There's not everything in here you're going to understand. But I will tell you what he told us to do. Is believe it. There's three parts to God. Jesus had a certain part to play. That was the flesh. He had to come down here and show us he was just like you and me. Okay? Just like you and me, he had to take on the sin of the world, right? So that means that when somebody got mad at him, like we do, right? We, we do things, we say things, right? Somebody says something, right? Well, Jesus had to take all that on, right? He had to take all that on. He had to walk through life that we're walking through, okay? And then he had to give up life. And I want to stress this to you. He had to give up life. It wasn't taken from him. He had to choose to give it up. Okay? And he chose to do that. 
He chose to go through the stripes and the beatings and the sickness and disease. So all the sickness and disease that we, we've talked about, we've prayed about here this morning that we want to make flee in Jesus' name, right? He took all that on. Marsha, I know you did I know you didn't mean to say it this morning, but God spoke to me when you said it. And I I, I please don't get me wrong. But when you, you said Randy's disease that you called out, it's not Randy's. No. It's mm-hmm. Satan's. And we're going to claim the name of Jesus over it. And it's not Randy's. It will no longer be Randy's. It's going to go back to hell where it came from. Amen. Yes. Amen. we we got to learn to talk better. Please don't get me wrong, Bar- Marsha. I'm not, I'm not doubting you. But sometimes we get caught up, okay? We get told these lies so many times, we start believing that they're ours. They're not ours. God has better for us. Amen. Praise you, brother. I need you all to bow your head and close your eyes, please. Father, I just ask you to to come here this morning, Lord. And Lord, if there's anybody in here that that needs you, Father, that needs to be touched by you this morning, Father, Lord, I just ask you to, with everybody's eyes closed, Father, if anybody needs you this morning, I ask you to raise their hand, Father. And Father, we just ask you to touch, Father, and restore. And Lord, I know that you're going to heal, Father. You're going to restore their life. And Father, that if they need salvation from you this morning, that they're going to get it. Because they're calling on you right now, Father. And Father, you don't you don't make it hard, Father. You don't you don't make it hard. I can tell you how hard it is. The thief on the cross said, Lord, remember me. That's all he had to say. So I ask you right now, if anybody needs Jesus here this morning, that you call out to him, Father. That you call out. You don't have to speak it out loud, but you call out to him. You raise your hand to him and you say, I need you, Father. I need you. And Lord, I just thank you that you're coming. That you're going to be like when Peter was walking on water. And and that he started sinking and he cried out your name, Lord. And you reached down your hand and pulled him up out of the water. And you walked out to the boat with no water, no wetness, no nothing on. So Father, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the salvation here this morning. We thank you for your word, Father. We thank you for your healing, Father. And we are going to talk better. We are going to do, we're going to change the world for you, Father. And we just thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If anybody.